Welcome again to my little uh, video workshop. Today I'm going to cover the uh, five input output cards that I built. They're, um, each card's got eight inputs and eight outputs. Gives me a total of 40 inputs and 40 outputs. The cards are based on the uh, nano, the Arduino nano chip. So let me uh, go over the schematic with you on that so you can kind of see what I've been doing. Start over here on the left hand side. I allow a couple of different ways to put power on the card. First, you can put anything from 12 to 24 volts in DC. And that comes into a voltage regulator that knocks it down to a constant 12 volts. I run that 12 volts over and I use it to control the outputs. But I also, the output from the 12 volts feeds into a 5 volt regulator. Then that 5 volt regulator feeds all my control logic. Okay. Now, besides being able to run DC volts to it, a lot of uh, layouts have 18 volts AC as the accessory voltage. So I allow 18 volts AC to come in to a rectifier, a bridge rectifier, which I then feed back into the 12 volt regulator and basically does the same thing from that point forward that I just showed you with the DC circuit. So that's how I power the card. Next is how I communicate back to um, JMRI. I do that to the RS-485 port. Now RS-485 is an old established uh, serial communications protocol. Uh, hardware, I should say, pro you can carry many protocols over it. The uh, protocol we'll be using is CMRI, Computer Model Railroad Interface. That was developed by Bruce Chubbs, I think back about 1985. So uh, that signal comes in from the computer, comes in the MAX 485 chip here. That's responsible for catch, capturing all the ones and zeros, the voltages coming in on the wires and captures, captures them, groups them up, and then sends, sends them over to the nano chip to be processed. We'll get deeper into the nano chip logic a little bit later. Right now, I just want to show you the, the uh, hardware portion of it. So if we go to the top card, here I have a, a board connector for eight inputs, and I put protective diodes so if you hook it up backwards, you don't burn anything up. Okay, so those inputs come into opto isolators. And what they do is they they uh, use infrared lighting to connect the two circuits together. This allows me to keep the 12 volt circuit on the right hand side segregated from the 5 volt circuit on the left hand side, so that the two don't cause any ground loops. So basically, when the when you ground this pin, you come in, you turn this transistor on, it turns this um, it turns this LED on, which turns this transistor on, which comes back down, tells the nano, hello, I'm here. So that's how the hardware works for the inputs. Now for the outputs, I go just the opposite way. So I send the command out up to the opto isolator which is wired in reverse. This time the LED is on the left-hand side, turning on the transistor on the right-hand side. So that, that photo opto coupler, again, does nothing but isolate the 12 volts on the right-hand side from the five volts on the left-hand side. So when I turn that transistor on, I forward bias this transistor. Now, I added this transistor so that you get some power because optocouplers are not meant to, to handle any power. They're, they're meant to be just isolating circuits. And the nano can only put out 40 milliamps, which is enough to drive a couple LEDs, but you can't even turn them all on at the same time. So I use these transistors to give you more power. Each of these transistors can handle up to a continuous current rating of one amp. So uh, there's a lot of power 
available for model railroad. You can drive relays, you can drive motors, you can do a lot of different things with this 12 volts. Okay, again, I, I protect the outputs with blocking diodes. So if you hook everything up backwards, nothing happens, but you, you don't burn anything up. Now to make all this convenient to work with, I also bring ground through a fuse and out to a terminal block so that you, you can come from here, take your ground out, go through your device and bring that ground back in to, to activate one of these transistors. Or you can bring that ground up, and put it to the input side to activate one of these photocouplers. So that's basically how the hardware works. And I'll drop that down and we'll, we'll start looking at what I'm using here in the way of Panel Pro. Now, GMRI Panel Pro, I'm using a profile that I call 8 input, 8 output. I have a local net simulator running just so you can see there's more than one connection that um, GMRI can support. The real connection that we'll be using is the CMRI on serial COM port 10. So with that said, let's go in and, and see what some of this setup looks like. We'll go in here to the preferences. Come on, preferences, open up. Try it again, there we go. And under connections, see I have a local net from Digitrack set up to a simulator. I'm not using it, just showing you that I can be connected to the rails and then I can go in here, I, I would use the plus button to configure a, a second connection. So I would drop the list down here, select CMRI, come in here and select the COM port that it's gonna talk on, right? When I do that, then I have established a serial communications that CMRI, the protocol CMRI can talk across. Once I have the protocol set up, I go in and I configure my nodes. Now CMRI is computer, 8-bit computer from the old days. And it still starts with address zero. Remember in computers, zero is a real number. So I have five nodes. I create nodes zero through four. That gives me my five nodes. And the way you do that, you drop down to add a node, you give it a node address. Okay, you tell it what type of CMRI card you're going to simulate. I mean, I talk to. All right, and I'm using a CME, which is their mini card, which gives you 24 uh, outputs and 48 inputs, if I remember correct. We'll see here in just a second. I don't have to do any delays. I don't have to worry about pulsing anything. And all this mess in here, you don't have to use, you know, 99% of the time you'll never use it. So we'll, we'll just ignore it for now. And you would add that node. I canceled that node, but once you do, look here, you, your address comes in, the type of card, how many bits per card, 24, three input cards, six output cards. So, Three cards times eight bit gives you your uh, three cards times eight bits gives you your 24 bit card, okay, and six cards times eight bits gives you your 24 bit. Um, in, wait a minute, six cards times eight gives you your 48 bits. Sorry about that. Okay, <laughs> and uh, it's selected. Okay, and now I can edit it, or I can bit assign it, or I can delete it. Okay, so now that I have four nodes, I have to configure those nodes. So I'll drop out of my preferences. Remember at this point, before you drop out, you have to do a save, or everything you've done will be lost. And when you click save, it's gonna say, all right, you have to restart to make all this take effect. So you would click the save. I'm going to skip it 
since I've already done these th steps. Now using Panel Pro, I'm going to go in under Tools, Tables, and Lights. Now lights are simple outputs. They're either on or they're off. That's all they're used for is on and off. It's like a like a light switch. They're either on or they're off. Now I'm going to step down through here. I've already programmed all this to save some time, but I want you to see how I did it. So for note, first thing I did, I made sure I was on CMRI, so that everything starts with the letter C. Okay, and then I had to add outputs. So I went to add, I went to hardware address nine, because I haven't used it yet. My, my test, okay, and I create that. Once I've created that, it re reminds you, you got to save all this stuff. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. If you go down here, where did you put it? There it is, right there, CL9. Okay. Card zero, everything in front of the, the one through nine would be 0001, 0002. So, it ignores all those zeros and understands that it's going to node zero. So the first nine outputs that I've assigned here, see I go output two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, my test. This is computer ease and sometimes they do weird things. And so here's output one, CL1 dropped way down here at the bottom of the list. It, Felt like doing it, people. I don't understand why. Okay, so those are all to node zero, and I'll show you that in just a second. Now, since I don't have a real layout that I'm hooking all this stuff up to, I've selected addressing that just simulates for, or demonstrates how you would do this. So to make it clear what node you're on, I started all my outputs on nodes one, two, three, and four with the designator one, two, three, or four. So here you see I have output 12. That means I'm on node one, output two. 13, I'm on node one, output three. You see that pattern? Now see here I have output two, two. So now I'm on node two, output two. Node two, output three. Here I'm on output 32, so that's node three, node, uh, output two. Node three, output three. Here I'm on 41, so I'm on node four, output one. Okay, see the, see the address designations out here? 4,000, 4,002, 3,000. I forgot to point that out to you. That's the that's the node addressing. Okay. So all these that, that look like they skipped over, they're down here at the bottom. Don't ask me why, but it wanted to put them all down here. Okay, so I just let it. So now that I've des uh, designated all my lights in JMRI, and I said that you're gonna go to a CMRI card the next thing I did was I went back to Tools, Tables, Sensors. Now sensors are inputs, okay, and they're either on or off. That's the way they work, okay. So it's, it's a closed switch, but instead of going out of the computer, it's coming into the computer. So I used the same scheme here. I made sure everything was CMRI, okay, I said Add. Uh, address 9, so that understands that that's 0009. Okay, so it's going to go to node 0, and I can say my test input, and then I would create that. Bingo, and it added it right there to my list. Okay, 
So on node zero, I have inputs one through eight with my little test input two, okay? And then for node one, see I'm starting with CS1000 now. So I'm on node one. So I use the same designation that I used on my outputs. One one means I'm on node one, output one, node one, output two, okay? Here I am, node two, input one, node two, input two. Sorry, I've been saying the word output when I meant input. Okay, so here's node three following the same scheme. Node four following the same scheme. See, they're, they're just repeating, but they're at a different uh, CS address, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000. So CMR, uh, JMRI is now configured for lights and sensors. So what I would do is I would go to file and I'd say store configuration and panels, All right? It's gonna ask me where I wanna store them, save it. Since I've already done this, it's gonna say, are you sure you wanna overwrite the old one? And I would answer yes. And it would save this configuration. So the next time I came back, it would remember all this. Now that I've, I've got JMRI configured. Let's see how CMRI uses it. So I'm gonna go back here to the Panel Pro and I'm gonna to go to the CMRI menu item. Now this will only appear if you create a CMRI connection. Okay, so we configured our nodes, right? Now I wanna just uh, look at the list assignments. Okay, the first node that comes up is node zero, and it's showing the output bits. So here you see on node zero, I have outputs one to eight in my little test that, that I just added to, to show you how it was done. Okay, now I'll flip it over here, and there's my input bits. Okay, inputs one through eight, and my little test input number nine. Okay. Now, if I change my node number, okay, you see I I go up to address scheme 1000, okay, and inputs, my username changes to have the one designator in front of everything to show that I'm on node one. I can flip over and show my outputs, okay. Go to node two, notice I get the same scheme, okay, node three, Everything changes to threes, okay. Node four repeats the same. I don't know why that first one always wants to be left behind, but just click anywhere and it updates. Okay, so you can see that all, all my lights and all my sensors have been assigned to a, to a CMRI node. Now, everything's out there working, but how do I know that? I can show you that by looking at the network manager. Okay, you see here I have polling. This is my polling sequence, one through five. But notice my node addresses are zero through four. Okay, and then I'm polling a SEMI card. And my status is polling, polling, polling. And my node four is timing out, trying to pull and time out, trying to pull. That's because uh, I burned up the nano chip or damaged the nano chip somehow. Uh, it'll work if I plug it in and use it to the USB, but it won't use the transmit pin on, on the board. So I've got to got to buy a new nano, three dollars and fifty cents. On that. Okay, so we'll just leave no four out of the equation for now. But I just wanted you to see how it how it would look. Okay, so we're we're polling everything. Now I don't have a camera, so I can't show you the outputs, but I can show you the sensor inputs. Okay, so I'm gonna come back up here on my sensor table to input one. 
Right now you see it's inactive. And I'm going to take my little wire and I'm going to jump her from ground to input one. And you'll see it go from inactive to active. Okay, and lift the wire, it goes inactive. Number two, number three, number four, number five, number six. So you can see how they're going, right? So my cards are working. I'm feeding my inputs back. Uh, I don't have a camera, so I can't hook it up and, and let you see the little LEDs on my outputs. But all my outputs are working as well. So I now have a at least a dummy test configuration set up here in JMRI where I can talk to and control 40 inputs and 40 outputs. Of course, my naming convention is, is weird because it's just a simulation. Here you would use meaningful uh, designators for what you're controlling on your output. That's the power of the username is that it lets you see it in English instead of cryptic little symbols. So with that, I'm going to close it up, give it a stop here, and hope you have a good day. Hope this was meaningful to you. Silly me, I almost got away here without going over the Arduino code, which I told you I would share with you. So let me pop this up. It's in the uh, standard Arduino library, I mean IDE. So I've already got it open, already loaded. So we'll start here at the top. First thing I do is I include the Auto 485 library. This is from the Arduino standard library. Uh, it's free to use. It's responsible for knowing how to get the ones and zeros across the wires. Then I include the CMRI library. This was written by Michael Adams, and it's free to use under the licensing code that he's given to us there. And that takes all the protocol that CMRI talks. In other words, that's how the ones and zeros are organized as they pass over the wire. And he properly formats those to get them back and forth so GMRI uh, knows what it's looking at. Basically, you can say it's a language, right? Uh, if I'm speaking Chinese and you're speaking English, we have a hard time communicating. But uh, if we're both speaking English, then we understand the, the language and the protocols that are being used. And that's, that's what this program does. Just makes it so both ends are talking the same, same language. So once I include those, then I get to use them. I don't have to write them or anything. I just need to read a little bit on how to use them. Not difficult at all. Then I have to define some things. So I first I define my eight inputs. Now, uh, what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm just going to make some nice English words that represent cryptic numbers so that when I'm writing the, the code, I think at the logical level, and I don't think, have to think at the hardware level. And that's the purpose of doing all this. So here you see I define inputs one through eight. And let's look at example input one is defined A5 is represented now by the term input one. So I don't have to remember that hardware address. Okay. And I drop down here and I'm going to do the same thing with my outputs. I'm going to take these cryptic little numbers 12, 11, 10, 9. And I'm going to put them to English terms output one, two, output three. Then I define what's called the DE pin, which is hardware pin two. And I have to define that and I pass that into a, a, a procedure called bus. Okay, now bus is, is part of the pre-written code that's in auto 485 and it takes care of everything. I just have to let it know what hardware pin it's gonna use to control the 485 chip, okay? So I tell it, all right, you're going to use pin two, and I'm going to dedicate that to you and use it for no other purpose. Then I'm going to define the English term CMRI address. 
Now each board, each node has to have a unique address. That way it knows who's being talked to. So JMRI will, uh, will, or CMRI will put out over the network node zero. And I'm talking to you and then all the other nodes say, oh, I'm not node zero, so I don't listen. Okay, and then only node zero pays attention to what's coming down the wire. So each card gets a unique address. So each card, each time I dump this into a card, I have to come in here and change this address, zero, one, two, three, four. Okay, then here again, I'm borrowing code from that predefined package that I import CMRI right I'm going to tell it that I'm I'm sending it to address 4 and it's a basically it's a CME card right 24 inputs 48 outputs and it's going to use the bus to communicate on so once that's all in the hardware is ready to go well almost uh, I should say all the imported software is ready to go. Everything's addressed and defined. So now in the setup section, setup is the area where you only do one, do, do things one time. It's, it's like in the kitchen when you're preparing a meal, um, you set out the knives and the forks and the plates and the glasses. And you get the ketchup out of the refrigerator and you know set the salt and pepper out. But you only do that once, uh, and you don't do it repeatedly. You, you, do, you do all that setup work, and it's done. You don't need to do it again for that meal. And that's basically what we're doing here. So I'm going to come in. The Arduino chip is a very versatile chip. All its pins can be inputs, or they can be outputs. Depends on what you tell them you want to use them for. So that's what I'm doing here, right? So I'm telling it input one through input eight, you're going to be an input pin and you're going to use a pull-up resistor. Okay, well, we're not going to go into what a pull-up resistor does, but it's a type of an input and we'll leave it at that. So once I have the inputs assigned, then I come down here and I'm going to do the same thing with the outputs. I'm going to tell uh, pin. Remember, output one is an English word that remember that represents a hardware pin number. So I'm telling it hardware pin number. You're going to be an output. So I do that for all eight outputs. Okay, these are commented out because I'm not using them. They were used a little bit during testing. I won't get into that. Now we get into the meat and the potatoes, why we got here. We go into the to the, the loop section of the program. Now computers are written so that they, they start at address line zero and they perform that task, then they do one, then they do two, and they perform code in, in the sequential order. And when it gets to the last line in the code, it quits. So if you want to do something repeatedly, you have to put it in a loop and tell it to go back and start over again. So that's all that the loop does for us is re continuously repeat the code within that loop over and over and over again. Okay, so here I'm borrowing a procedure from the code written by Michael, right? The CMRI dot process. So I'm telling it I'm borrowing this code. Okay, and that's all I have to tell it. It knows everything it needs to know from that point. So I define again A and B is Boolean. Okay, that means they can be true or for, false. In the Arduino uh, language, that's low or high. So I set these both to low just to have a starting point. And then I define an integer called offset, and I set it to zero just to have a starting point. And I do a for loop. This is all my inputs. Okay, so I do a for loop here. For integer i, as long as i is less than or, or greater than eight, 
okay, and then itinerate. That's what the plus plus means. Add one to the R, the value of of I. Okay, so when I come in, integer I is set equal to one. So the first time down through the for loop, it's going to see one. Then it comes back up and it itinerates, sees two, goes back down through, sees the number two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you see a pattern there? So the first time through, I is equal to one. So I hit a switch statement. So switch I. So I'm going to look at the value of I, which is set to one. In which case does that match? So you can see case one will match with I of one. So what I come in and I do the code in case one. So A, I set equal to a digital read of input one. So I look at that input pin. Is it on or is it off? Is it high, is it low? Is it true, is it false? Pick the terminology you want to use. It means the same thing, okay? So I set that one or zero into A. And then I use the word break. That means don't go any further in the switch statement, bail out. So it bails out, comes down to the bottom of, of the break, of the, the case statement. I can find that by matching there. There's the end of the case statement. So I, when I break, I drop down to here. Then I ask the question, if A is equal to low, then what I want you to do is set B equal to high. Well, if A is not equal to low, then I want you to do something else. So the if or else is the type of statement I'm using. So if, if A is not low, then do the else statement. B equals low. So what I'm doing is I'm inverting my logic, right? If A is coming in as, as low, I want it to be seen as a high. Else, if it's coming in as a high, I want to see it as a low. So I'm doing a, an input inversion here. Okay, then I'm going to take my offset. My offset is equal to I minus 1. So I is set to 1 right now. So 1 minus 1 gives me 0. So now I'm going to pass into CMRI the procedures that I'm borrowing. I'm going to tell it set the bit in CMRI at address 0 to the value of B. So I'm going to set bit 0 either high or low depending on what I saw on the input pin. And when I hit the bottom of the, of the loop. So I come back up to the top. It, I is now in, uh, added to, becomes the value of two. I go read the next pin. I go down. I invert the logic. I set it in, in CMRI. I come back up on three. I look at three, invert the logic, set the bit in CMRI, come back up four, five, six, seven, and eight. See how that's working? So I'm looking at each input pin, boom, 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 all eight of them, and I'm making sure that I'm setting that bit in CMRI so that it can be set back up to JMRI to use. Okay, so now we can see how I get inputs sent back to the computer. How about commands coming from the computer or outputs? Okay, so I set X and Y is Boolean logic, and I set them both to low just to have a starting point. And here I do a for loop, okay? We just did one up above. So now I know the first time in, I is going to be set to zero, and I'm going to repeat this for loop as long as I is less than or equal to seven. So zero through seven gives me eight positions, right? So I come through this for loop, and the end of that for loop is down here, okay? So I'm going to do everything in there one time. So I is zero. So I say X equals go get the bit from CMRI of I. So go get bit zero and set it 
store the value in x. Now I look and say, if x is equal to low, set y equal to high. Else, set y is equal to low. What I'm doing is another invert. Okay, I take what's coming from the computer and I invert it because the Arduino chip uses the opposite states from JMRI. So now I, I've set it either high or low. So I go back into my switch statement. Okay, so I is now equal to zero. So I say case zero, digital right, output one, the value of Y. So I'm gonna set the output one either high or low. Should look very familiar. Should look something like we just did for the for the input pins. So you can see I'm gonna break out of that logic, come down to the bottom, and I'm gonna back up. I'm gonna it, I now becomes one. I'm gonna look at output pin two. Okay, I'm gonna drop down. I'm gonna set bit the hardware bit two, uh, bit one. Okay, and I'm gonna step through all eight of my outputs and set the outputs according to what's coming in to me from CMRI. That's all I'm doing in this card. Basically, I'm, I'm looking at the inputs, inverting them, passing them to CMRI. Uh, I'm looking at CMRI for the value of my outputs. I'm inverting them and then setting the output pins on, on my Arduino chip. That's all the logic is doing for me here. So I hope that's fairly clear. I know if you if you do coding, it's, it's a lot clearer. But I hope that as a layman, you get an idea of, of what I'm doing inside this chip. Thank you for uh, watching. I hope you have a good day. And I'll close this thing down for now. Thank you.